Hello, everybody. My name is Josh Everett, and today I'm going to talk to you about using the curve number method to estimate runoff in Excel. Um, the curve number method was developed by the U.S. Soil Conservation Service, which has since gone on to become the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and it is a course method for estimating runoff after a precipitation event. Uh, if you want something a little more accurate, I would recommend going with the WEPP model, but the curve number method is a good way for everybody to be able to estimate runoff. First, I will show you where you go to get data for this. I use Mesonet because I'm in Oklahoma. I can't tell you where to go in another state, but I'm sure there's a resource. So you click on the weather tab. And then we come down to past data and files, daily data retrieval. Then you select the dates that you're interested in, select the variable. For this, we're looking for rain and the site nearest to you. And for me, it is Morena, which is pretty close to Stillwater, Oklahoma. And then you need to choose a curve number. Now these are pre-calculated, already done by the US Soil Conservation Service. And you pick it based upon your cover type and the hydrological condition that that soil is in. I, you'll have to make that decision based upon what you see in the field. So for me, I'm gonna be using the 62 for herbaceous in the semi-arid region. And then I'm going to be using a 41 for the pinyon juniper in the semi-arid region. And these are both in the same hydrological condition and soil group. So this is what the data looks like when it comes from uh, the from Mesonet, sorry. They send it to you in a zipped file. It usually takes about 30 minutes after your request, but it does say it can take up to 24 hours. And then once you unzip it, it'll open in an Excel file and look like that. And I've also put in the equations that we'll need over here. So they're easy for you to refer back to. I've already brought over the two curve numbers. So I'm just gonna start by putting in my curve number. And we'll get to calculating this. Then I will go to S, which is maximum soil water retention. Pretty easy if you haven't used Excel to calculate stuff, you put an equal sign first and that tells Excel that it's gonna do some math. And instead of typing 62 here, I'm just gonna click on this. That way Excel knows to use that cell. And so I can change uh, the CN number to test this 41 without having to change anything. So if you're changing site over and over, you could do that. Okay, so that is our maximum soil water retention. And then we'll come over to IA, which is initial abstraction. And this is I subscript A. If you don't know how to do a subscript in Excel, you push control one, highlight what you wanna change and click on subscript and click okay. So again, follow the equation that I've already written over here. I will click on the S and multiply it by 0.2, which is, what the estimate is for initial abstraction. That they estimate that it's 20% of the maximum soil water retention. And this is the, the doozy of the equations where I assume a lot of people aren't familiar with if equations. So we will do most of this work from up here. An if equation gives Excel options. So in this case, we're going to say if rain is greater than or my precipitation is greater than initial abstraction, use this, which is pretty easy, but it looks big. Uh, but if rain is less than initial abstraction, it'll just say zero. 
because if your precipitation is less than initial abstraction, that means all of that water has infiltrated it and none of it turned into runoff. So quickly, we will go through this. And be sure when you're going through this that you get your parentheses all in the correct places. Uh, if you don't, you will get the wrong answer. So if precipitation is greater than initial abstraction, and then I put a comma here, because that's the end of the if. Now it knows the rules that it's following. Now, rain. So if it's greater than initial abstraction, we have rain minus initial abstraction. I already messed up myself. This needs to be in a parenthesis. So that it's contained. And this caret, that symbol, that is an exponent. So this is raised to the power of two. And that exponent does need to be outside of the parentheses, not inside the parentheses. I can't click on this because my equation's going across, but I can tell that it's H2. So I'm just going to enter that in. And close that parentheses out. So now it knows if it's greater than IA, if precipitation is greater than IA, do this. Now I close that statement again. And it will show if it's less than IA, it's a zero. And you can see based on how the commas are, this is my false value, this is my true value. And the logic test that I've told it to go through. Now the equations input. Okay. Yes, everything's correct. I don't, I must have had a, a comma somewhere weird or a, a parentheses, not fully closed. Now you can, well, you can try and drag this down, but that's not working because these should mostly be zeros because they're pretty low. So what you need to do is for all of these that are locked, there are, they're not going all the way down. You need to lock the cell that you're using because otherwise Excel will keep doing the math straight across and there's nothing over here for it to, to work with. So how you do that, the only one I, can't, I don't need to change is my E2, which is my precipitation. Everything else I need to change. So all you have to do to lock it to the cell is go in the middle of the, between the letter and the number and throw in a dollar sign for all of those. And that should have fixed the problem. These should all go to zeros now. Yes because none of this is enough precipitation to cause runoff. Now we look through here. So there's a little bit of runoff, a little more runoff. So there's not a lot of precipitation events that cause runoff, which is normal. So we're going to then add up our precipitation 
and our runoff. To do that, we will do equal sum. Click on it or put a parenthesis and calculate. By doing this, you can select everything and push enter and it will do it. Or a faster way, Excel will ignore the first row. as a, uh, a title row and you just click on this, push enter and that summed it for me. So we can see that the herbaceous in a B hydrologic group or hydrologic soil type and a good hydrolo hydrologic condition gets only about a quarter inch of uh, runoff. Uh, per year. That's something I forgot to specify. Uh, this is in inches because this was developed by the U.S. Soil Conservation Service. There are equations to transform the curve number method uh, for metric system, but uh, we used the U.S. standard system. And since I've locked all the cells and done the math easily, we can just change variables we want. The only one that would, we can't mess with is the Q. We'd have to actually go through and rewrite the equation. But here, this is going to change everything without me having to re-enter all the data because I locked everything to the positions I'm interested in. So we see that this pinion juniper has zero runoff. So may not seem like much a quarter inch of rain but or a quarter inch of runoff but uh, for stream flow that's a an amount of water that matters so this may not be exactly comparable to a tall grass prairie and an eastern red cedar encroachment but we can use it to estimate that we will potentially have reduced stream flow which is interesting to think about as we look forward to more and more eastern red cedar encroachment. With that, uh, thank you and I hope that this was helpful.